Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to take a look at a rather unusual and somewhat quirky case. This is the IONS KZ33TF. There's actually two versions of this available, so if you're looking at this and thinking, oh god Mike, addressable RGB, not particularly keen, there is actually the KZ33T, which just comes with the case, no fans at all. Price difference between the two, looking around about £10 difference, depending when and where you're shopping. At the time of recording, which is the 19th of January, which I think then, of 2024 and if you're looking with it without fans you're looking around about 55 pounds with fans you're looking at about 60 62 so those sort of prices links will be in the video description if you want to check out from pcgamingcases.co.uk which is the home of ions and also places like amazon and ebay that kind of stuff as well so have a shop around see what price is best for you and actually see what option is best for you maybe you like the fans you may not when I finish doing this review, but you have to keep watching to find out why. There are some slight quirks with this case, I've got to say it. It's one of those things that you get a case like this and you look at it and think, that makes so much sense. What a great idea. But there's always just a little something which is just maybe slightly making me hesitant on it. But anyway, we'll come to that a little bit later on. So let's go through what the case is all about, what it is. We'll do a bit of a tear down. You can probably see I've got fans illuminated in there. There's a power supply and stuff in there at the moment. And I've also got an RGB controller because this doesn't actually come with one technically. It sort of does, but it sort of doesn't, which is where I'm kind of edging towards with this fans thing. So it comes with five included 120 mil addressable RGB fans, four of which are excellent, one of which sucks. Well, it doesn't suck, but it could be better. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. You can see there's plenty of ventilation here. It's basically like a big tea bag. There's holes in it everywhere. So in terms of airflow, this is going to be great. If you're thinking of doing maybe an ITX build, you can do that. It's really predominantly aimed at ITX, but it will fit a micro ATX motherboard in there as well. Sadly, no ATX. It's a little bit too compact for that. I'll show you the actual specifications from the side of the box on the screen now, so you can have a quick drill down through those. So you can see the measurements there. You can also see the fan support all that kind of good stuff and the fact that it's made from two millimeter aluminium and the rest is uh, SPCC steel which is 1.6 mil so it's actually pretty strong pretty sturdy pretty decent stuff to be honest with you very impressed it's a, a very unusual looking case as well kind of reminds me a little bit of a land lead design I'm not too sure where they've got the inspiration from this from because it is it's very quirky it really is so let's talk about fan support so fan support you can put three 120s on the top but it doesn't appear that you can put a radiator on the top, which we'll take a look at later. You might be able to fudge one in, but it isn't kind of recommended. When it comes to the front section, two 120mm fans, uh, that is basically it. No option for any other options like 140s or anything like that. And it doesn't appear any water cooling options on the front either. All of the water cooling, bizarrely, is uh, yeah, in the back, which is highly unusual, but it hopefully will make sense as we go through this. Anyway, let's get started. So front panel, as you can see, loads of ventilation there. You've got the two 120 mil addressable RGB fans or not, if you go for the other version. You've got a nice big clicky power button with an illumination in the middle. You've also got a reset button, which isn't gonna be a reset button unless you go for the version without the fans, in which case you can use it as a reset switch. If you get it with the version like this with the built-in fans, your reset button is gonna be for uh, changing your RGB colors, which if I press and hold that, we're now in motherboard, no, we're now in fan control mode. So you can choose to have it either controlled by your motherboard RGB, which would for a lot of people be preferable. If you don't have a controller, then you can use this and then you can press the power button, or sorry, the reset button and cycle through the uh, available colors of which there are numerous. Try and find something which uh, looks quite nice on camera, although all of them are really, really bright. The actual colors are very, very vivid. And the camera is probably not going to do it justice, I'll be honest with you. But uh, we do what we can. But anyway, so you get an idea of what it's all about in terms of lighting, etc. We'll take a closer look at that inside shortly. Let's find some unicorn puke. Actually, let's go back to the other controller. There we go. I've got my Game Max controller in here as well to kind of give you the impression of how a motherboard would control it. And you actually do need something to power it. It's a very unusual RGB system, which I'll try and explain better as we go through. Anyway, let's move on. So moving around to this side. So we've got a solid piece of tempered glass there with a nice white trim around the outside edge. You can see inside, there's actually quite a lot of room in here. If you're thinking of it as an ITX build, if you're thinking of micro ATX, slightly more cramped. When it comes to CPU cooling, if you're going with air cooler, you're limited to 160 mils. I've measured it. I think it's slightly more about 162, but 
depending on what board you're putting in there. When it comes to the size of the graphics card, you're looking at around about 360 mil. So most triple fan models are going to fit in there absolutely fine. There's a, there's a ton of room in there. There really is. And as you probably noticed as well, you have got fans in the bottom. The tempered glass side panel comes off. There's actually some really nice screws they've attached this with. So even though it is a slightly more budget orientated case, it does feel very much like a Lian Li, like these nice little screws with rubber grommets and stuff. It's very nice stuff. And so that just slides off and you see that hooks in. So holds it all nice in place. Completely clear glass, uh, no tint to that whatsoever. And now with out of the way, you can see a little bit more of what is going on here. So as you see, we've got our fan set up. So two in the front, two in the bottom. In the bottom section, you've got the options for, basically you can either take those out of there if you've got a slightly larger graphics card, because again, Micro ATX case is a little bit cramped on those lower slots. You've only got four slots to deal with. So if you've got like a 3.5 slot card, you're basically not going to have the fans in there. If you're going for something like the 2070 Super, the new Slim X version from MSI, which we reviewed recently, that'll fit in there fine with the fans in place. That isn't going to be an issue at all. The only thing obviously is bear in mind your Micro ATX motherboard. If the PCI Express slot is towards the top, going to be fine. If it's the next one down, you're going to be encroaching more so into that space. So do be wary of that. If you're going with ITX, you're going to be fine because the PCI Express slot is going to be right at the very top regardless. So that is excellent. You've also got the fan on the back as well. So the one on the back is actually the controller as such. So there's actually an additional kind of wire coming out of there, which connects up to the reset button. So you then use that, press and hold the reset button. It switches between the two modes. But it doesn't work at all unless the addressable RGB cable is plugged into an addressable RGB source. So if you get a motherboard that doesn't have addressable RGB, you still can't use the switch to cycle through the lighting. It still needs power to the actual fans in the form of the 5 volt addressable RGB cable to actually get them to illuminate. So it's one of those things which is a little bit redundant. I think personally, I'd have much rather have seen five of this, these normal fans, of which the fans themselves are absolutely great. They spin down to a very slow speed of 350 RPM and go up to around about 1650 RPM and they don't make much noise at all. They're considering basically you get five of them for, well, basically a tenner. It's incredible value for money. The fans are exceptionally good and they actually move a surprising amount of air, which is actually quite handy because the design of the holes on here, pinhole design for mesh and for basically airflow, isn't great because it's a very low ratio of the actual hole to the surrounding area. So it's like a 50-50 almost. So the actual design is being more of a filter and more of a restriction than you'd get if you had something like a hexagonal mesh, which is uh, far superior for airflow. Anyway, moving that to one side. So as you look up towards the top, you can put three 120 mil fans in the top. There's specific mounting holes at the top, which you're probably seeing for some B-roll. So that means really it's going to be unlikely you're going to put a 360 mil rad in there. I don't think there's going to be enough room in there. Three fans is actually quite tight in there anyway. So basically no water cooling in this area. You wouldn't want to put one on the bottom because it's going to encroach on your graphics card. You might put one in the back, potentially like a 120. That might work. You might get a, a 240 in the front, but again, it's probably not advisable. So that is why there is this big cutout. So you can see the big cutout on the left. That is to gain access to CPU coolers, all that kind of stuff, back plates. The one on the other side is to actually put your CPU cooling head through. So on an AIO, you have the radiator, you have the tubes, and then you have the pump head or cold plate, however you want to look at it. So that basically passes through there. You have your radiator in the back and you have the CPU cooler coming through that hole and then going onto your motherboard, which is a really unusual way of doing things. But... I think it does open up possibilities for some really interesting builds. Now, I did look on the website and it does appear that there has at some point been a blanking plate cover, which either goes here or goes there at the back, which would cover up all of that. And it does seem to have lighting on, but it doesn't appear to be an option as of yet. If that is the case and it does become available on the market, I'll try and link it in the video description. Otherwise, I think for neatness, if you're going for an ITX build and it's kind of all shoved over this way, you could just put some white fablon or some kind of white cardboard even perhaps in there just to cover up that section, which potentially you might want to do because there's an awful lot of wiring. You've got five addressable RGB fans, all of which use the normal three pin, five volt addressable RGB. And also they've got a pass through cable on them as well. So you can daisy chain them and they are standard four pin PWM. Again, 
they have got pass-throughs as well. So you're looking at 10 cables to cable manage, which is quite a lot, which is why it's a rather messy affair in the back. So in terms of motherboard support, we're looking at ITX or Micro ATX. Uh, the actual standoffs are pre-installed and they're machined in there. So you can't remove them. You don't get any additional ones in the set. And speaking of which, actually you get this nice little box, which is uh, rather cute. And it's got a hole in the top, so you can maybe hang it up in your tool shed or something. So yeah, nice little box with bits and pieces. So if you want to put stuff together, you can do. There were some Velcro straps in there as well, which I've already put in here. But yeah, it's, a, it's actually a very nice presentation. So let's move around to the back of the case. And as you can see, it takes a standard size ATX power supply, which again, for smaller ITX chassis is somewhat unusual. You've got the 120 mil fan there. A little bit of adjustment up and down. So the holes themselves actually act as the holes for the screws. So you can move it up to the top here, or you can move it down to the bottom, whichever suits. If you're maybe trying to put a radiator in the top, you might want to move that down a little bit. You've got these really nice thumb screws as well for the PCI Express retainer, and also color-coded screws, so silver screws in there. Unfortunately, the fans are still using black ones, but I suppose you can't have it all. You've got your IO section here, and at the back there, you've got some ventilation. This is effectively like a dual chamber design, so you've got kind of like the showpiece on this side, and all your messy stuff in the back. So let's unplug this and we'll uh, we'll take a look inside the back and uh, hopefully I've taken enough B-roll so you can get a good idea of what is actually going on. So in the back, you can see more ventilation, lots of holes there. This actually could work well for a kind of relatively low powered, passively cooled box because the amount of ventilation on there, it would probably have quite good passive cooling. So if maybe you're thinking of setting up some sort of Plex server with a low end processor, this could be just the thing. And the reason I say that is because potentially you can actually store a lot of hard drives in here. So you can obviously store whatever you, your motherboard will take, so M.2 drives, stick them out wherever you want to. But actually in the back here, you can install two 3.5 inch drives and also an additional three 2.5 inch SSDs or older style hard drives. Let's take the panel off. So you see, aluminium panel, very nice. Happy days. And this is where it gets a bit messy. So this is basically where you're gonna end up throwing all your junk. Now you've probably seen B-roll of this before the power supply was in. I've deliberately put the biggest power supply I could find in here. So this is the uh, Gingmax 550 watt RGB Gold. It's a chunky boy. It's got 140 mil fans. So this one I think is about 165 mil. It's one of the bigger power supplies on the market. I just wanted to put it in there just so you can see that physically you can get it in there. It is crammed. There is also a separate Gingmax addressable RGB controller and also there is the Noctua fan speed controller as well because I didn't have one of those available and the GameX one is uh, not particularly good for that. Anyway, I digress. So even with that, cable management isn't too bad. It is a kind of like stuff it in C. If you've got more drives in there, then you put two drives in here, two two and a half inch drives in the front section, which you're seeing some beef roll from because I recorded that earlier. And behind that, you can put two three and a half inch drives. You can actually fit another two and a half inch drive kind of underneath where the power supply goes. There's four screws to hold that in there. And they're kind of hinting that if you are installing a radiator in like a 240 mil radiator, this is where it's gonna go. So your radiator and your fans are gonna be mounted onto these brackets, uh, screw holes there, there and there. And then you would put your pump head or cold plate through that hole on the side and take it round to the front of the chassis. Now, of course, you don't have to do any water cooling if you don't want to. And you could easily put another two 120 mil fans in here Maybe take the ones off the base and put them in the back so it's all kind of being pulled out. The choice effectively is going to be up to you. Obviously, wiring is something you really need to take attention of. For some bizarre reason, I don't quite understand why, to make it easier to cable manage, they've left ridiculously long cables for the USB 3 and also for the Type-C connection and even for the HD audio and stuff. So potentially you can kind of route it all the way around and do a very, very tidy job on it. I've not done that for this. I purely wanted to throw stuff in there and just see what we can do to get it all up and running. But depending what you're putting in there, you may or may not have additional room to work with. If you're putting a radiator in this bit, then all of this becomes kind of a void. So you'd have to get all your wiring down here, in which case a smaller SFX power supply and potentially some modified cables might be beneficial for cable management. It is gonna be quite tight, but it is possible. So next we'll take a look at the bottom section. So as you can see, that is where the fans mount. So you screw them in from the bottom, got some feet on there. The feet actually don't raise up a great deal. They are about a centimeter. So it's not the highest. I would have liked to have seen it a little bit higher possibly to get a bit more airflow in from that bottom, but it does a 
a reasonable job as it is, so I don't think it's too big a deal. You can see there you've got the screws there for mounting hard drives, so if you want to, you could even put another two SSDs in there, probably one mounted there and one mounted further up possibly, or even you could just sticky tape them in there if you, if you really wanted to, they would fit. The power supply gives you a gap of about a centimeter, so most um, sort of seven, eight mil drives would slot under that quite easily. Something else I should mention before we carry on, there is actually a magnetic filter as well. Unfortunately, this has the kind of same hole type, like the round holes, as this does. So if you put the filter on the bottom, then you're essentially kind of blocking off maybe 90% of the airflow because where the holes overlap with the existing holes, it's very similar to what we had with the Cooler Master, the Q300L, where you had round holes and then you had round filter on top of it, and it basically just blocks everything off and made it somewhat pointless. But if you are possibly putting a graphics card in here and you're putting the fans elsewhere, then it might stop some of the dust ingress, but again, up to you. I've left it off purely because I think it's a little bit pointless. And on the top, you can see again, more of this ventilation. So this is where your three 120 mil fans can go, should they want to. Again, you might be able to get a radiator in there, but I think it's gonna be really hard to do to actually get to for the screws physically. So I would say realistically for the inside, it's gonna be a case of fans only. So now we've got it plugged back in and we'll take a look at the fan noise and see what that's like. I've got a Noctua fan controller here, which is a rotary dial. So let me just grab that from the back here. And if we put it onto the lowest possible setting, it's basically silent. You cannot hear it at all. 50%. You can hear a very, very slight noise. And on full blast, you can start to get an idea of what that mesh does to fans. So it does create a rather unusual noise, but it is actually pulling in a decent amount of air. So yeah, you can see that is holding very easily. So there is a lot of airflow going through there. It does make a noticeable difference in terms of speed. Realistically, I don't think you're gonna need it that high with it on the lower speeds. It's absolutely fine and it's still moving actually quite a decent amount of air with the combination of the updraft and also that coming in as well and then it being exhausted at the top and any other positive pressure is going to be pushing out through the top or out through the sides or basically anywhere else where there's mesh of which there is a lot including actually the PCI Express blanking plates at the back which I think have been done really really nicely color-coded uh, removable ones as well so if you have to remove one or then you maybe decide you want to get a new AMD APU, put it in there and take out your graphics card and have a nice little system which doesn't need a graphics card, then you can put those in, slot them back in, no problems at all. But yeah, overall, I think it's a, a very unusual design and even things like at the top here where you've got all that ventilation, so leaving that top section kind of open, you've got that line of holes across the top there. So again, if you are considering putting water cooling in the back section, it's a kind of very open affair. It's very, uh, very unusual, very strange. I'm still not entirely sure what I think of this case, if I'm completely honest with you. I'm a little bit baffled by it in many ways because it tries to do so many things just a little bit differently. And I think, for me personally, ultimately, I would love to have seen them just put five of the normal fans in here rather than being that one on the back with the controller. Because something which I will show you actually is let's say we decide on our favorite lighting style. So let's find one which is kind of obvious. Let's go with green. So you've got your light in, you set it to green on the controller and then decide what right, you've had enough for the day. So you're gonna go and turn your PC off and we'll flick the power switch. So turn your power off, turn your PC off for the night and you come in the next day, turn your PC on we've got unicorn puke. So then you're gonna to have to go through and manually find your lighting or press and hold the reset button to switch over into the uh, the alternate mode from the onboard controller from your motherboard, that sort of thing. So it's a little bit odd. I would have much preferred to not had that option. And the thing is, if you don't plug in the extra connection, it basically does other weird things and you have no control whatsoever. So you do actually have to have it. So you basically lose your reset switch. So that is where I am 
a little bit confused with this one. So it does so many things so well and so differently, which makes it one of those things where you think, this is very cool. I want to actually try and do a build in this. But then that weird RGB setup kind of, for me, makes things a little bit more like, mm, do I, don't I? I think ultimately if, if um, you've got your own fans already or you've got a controller or you basically got your mind set on different fans, get the version that comes without fans and kind of go to town and do whatever you want. I think if you put in, I don't know, your Arctic fans or your SWA fans or whatever it might be, I think it will be a preferable solution. But if you don't mind having to press the reset button when you turn your PC on, or maybe you're just going to leave the lights off and not bother. Although saying that, I'm not sure if you can actually turn them off altogether. I don't think you can. <laughs> I don't think there's a button to do that. No, there definitely isn't. So no, you cannot turn the lights off altogether, which is unfortunate. Anyway, I'm waffling now, so let me know what you think about this one in the comments section. I'm sure it's going to get some very bizarre and interesting comments from you guys out there. It, it is an unusual case, so it does merit that. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. Massive shout out again to IONS and people over at PCGamingCases.co.uk for sending us over to, for us to review and take a look at. If there's anything from IONS that maybe you fancy, or maybe you like the idea of this, but you don't particularly like the design, they've actually got an absolute ton of cases. We are going through them slowly but surely. So we're going to try and take a look at pretty much most of their new range. This is one of the new range, so this will be coming to their website very shortly if you want to check it out. And obviously, if you've got any questions on it, feel free to let us know in that comment section below. Or alternatively, if it's a little bit more in-depth or you want some measurements or something done, maybe head over to our Discord. It's completely free of charge and I'll try and uh, measure things up should you have any specific requirements. But I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. Again, I still I have no idea what I think about this case. My mind flicks from one thing to the other. One minute I love it, one minute I hate it, and I kind of switch in between the two. I think I really need to do a, a proper build in this to see what the end result is like and possibly maybe even put some different fans in to get a different impression but overall i think it's an interesting design an interesting case let me know what you think in the comment section so i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching